If you are thinking about getting your autism diagnosis, unfortunately, there is a discussion to be had about whether that is something that is right for you because unfortunately, there are downsides that come with it. There are of course reasons for it as well. That's what we're gonna discuss in this video. For context, I've had my autism diagnosis for about a year and a half now. I was on the waiting list for five years beforehand. I started self-diagnosing and telling people I was autistic around the two, three year mark on the waiting list. And I didn't know a lot of these facts until the week of my d diagnosis appointment. And some of them I didn't know till after. So I think it's really important that you know everything before you decide you want to get your diagnosis. So I'm gonna highlight them here. So then you can make your own decision after. I would say quickly before we start, but a disclaimer, you are 100% allowed to do whatever you want. This is gonna sound like I am on very much one side of it, but I am not. I understand if you want to or if you don't want to, a thousand percent. Please don't judge someone on their decision for going a certain way on it. I thought we'd start with the reasons for because I feel like they're the more, not obvious ones, but the more talked about. And I'm going to start with the biggest one and the main one and that is validation and having that validation in feeling different, having the validation to tell people, having the validation to even just talk about autism. Validation is the main reason people get their diagnosis. It was my main reason. If you have been feeling different your entire life, not knowing autism, oh also very very quickly another disclaimer the, I'm, I'm from the UK, a lot of this stuff is specific to the UK. You can generalise it easy, but I am from the UK because sometimes I get people commenting being like, well, what are you talking about your diagnosis being such and such when I got an NHS diagnosis, it's very different from America. And this is from an adult perspective, a lot of my videos set around adult autism rather than children autism. Not that they are different, but there are very, very different reasons for diagnosis and seeking a diagnosis for your loved one rather than seeking diagnosis for yourself, which is kind of what I'm talking more about in this video. So anyway, if you've been feeling different, why is this so bright? If you've been feeling different your entire life and you finally get this autism diagnosis, it helps you feeling less like an imposter and less likely of having imposter syndrome within your autism. And it adds a label to that feeling of isolation, of feeling you're like you're the only one in the world going through this and you don't understand how other people are getting through certain situations when you can't deal with it. Or feeling like you have no one that understands you, or feeling like you've got no friends. Having this label is like, ah, my brain does work differently and somebody else agrees with me <laughs> that I am different. Sometimes as well it can just give you like that little bit of backup to tell people. I certainly have this within my family. Having my diagnosis made me feel less silly because certain people in my family don't understand autism and when I told them I was seeking my diagnosis they were very and they, they don't they don't know much about the disorder in general at all so when I was telling them I think I'm autistic they were like really? but you, you don't you don't seem it. So then when I got my diagnosis, it was very much like, a, look, see, I'm not weird for thinking that this is who I am. And it gave me that backup to feel like I could talk about it. And also on here, if you've been subscribed for a really long time, well, over a year and a half, you'll know that I didn't talk about my autism before I got my diagnosis, and that was just a personal choice. I definitely don't think you have to have a diagnosis to talk about autism on the internet, but I felt like I couldn't talk about it or I didn't want to talk about it until I got that diagnosis because I was worried people were gonna be like, well, you're not even diagnosed, so why are you talking about it? You can't even say that you're autistic. That isn't valid, but some people do do that, and I felt like I wouldn't be able to handle those criticisms well until I had my diagnosis and been like, see, a doctor thinks that I'm correct. I could do a whole video talking about validation and not feeling like an imposter within your autism, but that is one of the main ones people seek a diagnosis. Second reason for getting an official diagnosis is legal reasonable adjustments, and that goes across like all different places, sectors, everything. So you can get legal reasonable adjustments for work, for school, for uni, for all those things. And you have a legal standpoint when it comes to those when you have your official diagnosis. And if those places won't give you them, you can take them to court. You can literally like sue them for discrimination because you are legally disabled and you are legally required those reasonable adjustments. Without a diagnosis, Obviously some places are going to be amazing and let you have that regardless, but a lot of places need it legally. My university wouldn't let me have them until I had a letter from my doctor saying that I was on the waiting list. But I would hope workplaces would provide those things regardless, but 
it's legal if you've got your diagnosis. Third reason that you might apply for it is the opportunity to get PIP, which is personal independent payments. It's basically financial support from the government for disabled people. And then also everything that comes along with PIP. So when I say PIP, insert it with whatever you have in your country if you have that. But you can't... <laughs> PIP's a funny one because PIP is in insanely hard to get anyway. I haven't went for it because I've heard that the process is very, very, very distressing and I'm not sure I'm, re I'm ready to do that yet. But <laughs> you can't even attempt to go for PIP without your diagnosis. You need your diagnosis forms, papers, everything to even be considered for PIP. It's not a guarantee you're going to get it, but you have the opportunity to go for PIP if you have your diagnosis. And then once you've got PIP, you can get a whole lot of benefits from different places. You can get a disabled rail card, you can get disabled tickets from venues. There is a lot of stuff that you can get once you have PIP. Unfortunately, you can't get them if you don't have PIP, which I don't particularly like, but that's just how the system's set up and it's it can be life changing. I, like there are so many instances, like, like even if we just take the tickets, for example. So I have just been to Noah Khan and obviously there is the disabled seating. There is a lot of disabled seating at First Direct Arena, so I wouldn't feel like I was taking it away from wheelchair users who obviously need that disabled seating. But I get very, 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 very stressed at concerts, at theatres, everything like that, because I very much hate small spaces and obviously at concerts this, the seats are like this big. Ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. So out of preference for my disability I would love to be able to get disabled seating so I have more room, I'm not going to get overwhelmed, I'm not going to have a meltdown because people are touching me. I'd prefer to get those seats but I can't get those seats without PIP. That is the only way they will accept it for my disability. Obviously this might be, there might be a way around it but from what I've seen the majority of disabled seating requires to see your PIP. If I'm wrong, tell me, tell other people in the comments, but from what I've seen, that's how it works. And obviously the benefit of PIP is that you can have personal independent payments so that you don't have to run yourself into the ground with working full time. Fourth reason that I have was that it may help with misdiagnoses. It's very, very common, especially in AFAB autistic people, that you have other misdiagnoses within your life <laughs> before you get to your autism diagnosis. I was very lucky and the only misdiagnosis that I had was depression. Other people, it can be things like BPD, bipolar, schizophrenia. There are a lot of different things that other people get misdiagnosed with before they get to that autism diagnosis. And if you get your autism diagnosis, you might be able to fight your old ones. So if you've been diagnosed with BPD and then you get your aut autism diagnosis, you can then be like, I don't need meds for BPD anymore. They aren't what I need because I'm actually autistic. And then you can get that old diagnosis taken away. And that is actually all of the reasons that I can think of for reasons for a diagnosis. If anybody has any more, please comment them down below. Please, please comment them. I would love for there to be more reasons to get a diagnosis. So if you have one, please comment it. But let's get on to the reasons why you might not want to get your diagnosis. The first one is that it goes on your NHS profile forever. It's there, that's it. And then people can make decisions on that without your consent. The biggest one that I'm going to talk about is when COVID happened and unfortunately there were a lot of cases of blanket DNRs going on autistic, it wasn't just autistic people, it was people with learning disabilities, on a lot of people got a DNR put onto their profile because of their learning disability. This is a very big conversation within the community and within the medical community but there have been reports that it was definitely happening. I don't know if it happened to every person that had a learning disability but there was a report that said it happened and basically if you went into hospital and it was sort of said that you had a learning disability you got a DNR on even if you didn't ask for it and obviously if you weren't in a position where you could argue that that's it you just didn't get resuscitated a DNR is a do not resuscitate which basically means if you are in a situation within the hospital or within whatever and you need resuscitated if you have a DNR the resuscitation isn't allowed to happen legally. And I think this came back to during COVID, very, very hard decisions were had to be made about who could have a bed. There wasn't enough resources for everybody. But the fact that people with learning disabilities were the one who were the first to go is horrific. It is absolutely disgusting. It should never, ever have happened. The NHS have came out and said this should never, ever have happened. But unfortunately, it seems like it did. And that is something that we all have to remember now. Like that's something that it happened, it was a mistake, 
but it still happened and that's horrific. People, people in all likelihood who had learning disabilities lost their life because we were deemed less worthy of saving. So that's just one instance, it could happen again. Hopefully it never, ever, ever happens again. But something like that could happen and it's on your NHS profile, which also means it can stop you from moving abroad. It has stopped us from moving abroad. I always wanted to move abroad. This all in all likelihood this isn't gonna happen the majority of countries do not let us in if you're autistic you are not allowed to emigrate like that's it's just not allowed <laughs> the main reason that is given by these countries governments is that we are seen as a burden on the healthcare which i think is absolutely ridiculous because there isn't a lot of healthcare associated with autism anyway this is a point that i'm going to come on to but i don't get any healthcare assistance from the nhs whatsoever for my autism there are health conditions that are very comorbid with autism but the stuff that i would need medical assistance with are those health conditions not my autism there is nothing i get from the nhs for my autism at all so how i'm seen as a burden on the healthcare is silly i understand that within autism we probably have a more likelihood to use the healthcare system but if you're emigrating you have to pay for your healthcare anyway the majority of the time so i think it's ridiculous it is also the only developmental disorder in the majority of these countries that you're not allowed in for but yeah you, the majority like new zealand canada i don't know about the us Australia, a lot of them see it as a burden on the healthcare, so you aren't allowed to emigrate. And obviously, if you have that diagnosis, they know. <laughs> there's, there's nothing stopping them from knowing. But if you don't get your diagnosis, you can still say you're autistic, but you don't have to tell them that. And how are they going to find out? It's not on your NHS profile. Next up, it can hinder your chances of adopting and fostering, and it can also affect your parental rights. You are going to be seen less likely as a good option for an adoptee or a fostering. Whether adopting and fostering is a good thing is a completely different conversation, and we're not having that right now. But if you see yourself wanting to adopt or foster in the future, they could see your disability as as a thing that could make you not a good parent and then also with your parental rights disabled parents have a much higher likelihood of having their parental rights stripped away and having their children took away because of their disability and they can see you as not having the capacity to care for your children correctly more likely when you are down as disabled it can also go against you in divorce proceedings if you are disabled and your partner is not disabled they are more likely to get custody because you are disabled. My next one was that it doesn't entitle you to any further help. I have had no help once I got my diagnosis. There was a appointment offered to me after. You can have an appointment, I think it was six weeks after you get diagnosed within the NHS to talk to an assessor, ask any questions, but that was it. It wasn't like a counselling session, it was nothing. It was literally just to ask questions about autism, ask advice maybe, but there wasn't a lot of that anyway but that is it you aren't entitled to any counseling you aren't entitled to any meds because there isn't any medication for autism the only support you can get is financial aid from the government and like I say it's a very very strenuous process to go through anyway another reason is that it can be very very expensive if you decide to go private obviously i'm very very lucky i'm in the uk we have the nhs and i did get an nhs diagnosis i didn't even go down the right to choose pathway so mine was just a straight nhs assessment but like i say I was waiting for five years. If you don't want to wait that long, you might go down the private route, or if you're in another country, you have to go the private route. I think the average cost that I've seen for a private diagnosis is starting at around 1500. That is a lot of money. That's a lot of money. It is very expensive. And the majority of the people who are doing these assessments aren't trained to be doing assessments with adults with autism because the standard is that children get diagnosed with autism and some of them just aren't very understanding and don't want you to get your diagnosis anyway leading to my next point the, the diagnosis can be very very draining within itself i am insanely lucky in that my diagnosis went incredibly i'm so grateful for the lady i have i have a video talking about that so i'll leave that whichever side it is but i was lucky the majority of people that i've talked to who've had one said it was awful they are made to do tasks that are just demeaning they are talked to like children it can be so so draining and it can take you years to recover from doing your assessment another reason that you might not want to get your official diagnosis is that it can make getting some medical procedures treatments a lot harder such as gender affirming care there seems to be this kind of pattern going on at the minute that if you are autistic people are less likely to refer you for gender affirming care than if you are not autistic because they see it as a part of your disability which is disgusting but 
it's apparently happening to a lot of people. So if you are somebody who is trans, you might not be able to get that gender affirming care. Dare I say it as easily, as if it's easy in the slightest anyway, but it might be even another hurdle you have to pass by if you have your autism diagnosis, because they'll just be like, oh, it's just because you're autistic, so we're not gonna do anything with you. My last point is that you can also be discriminated against in certain professions in terms of if they require medicals. So things like the military and similar things down that vein, they can reject you because of your autism, because you are disabled. Obviously that's a discussion about whether that should be happening or not, but if you are somebody who wants to go into the military route or something like that, if you have your diagnosis, it's probably not gonna happen. Also, this isn't a point that I have written down, but on the word discrimination, Having your diagnosis also doesn't mean that you don't get discriminated against. Obviously, it's illegal. And in, let's take the like employers. People are still not understanding the legal requirements of not being allowed to discriminate against someone on their disability. I have been discriminated against in terms of employers and talk, even just talking to employers and they've been like, uh, about the disability. Having that legal thing there and being like, yeah, I can sue you doesn't mean that people don't do it, they're gonna do it. And also, even if it does happen and you have proof and you're like, right, I'm gonna sue you, that is expensive, like, that's probably, you, it's probably not gonna happen anyway. It's a hard route to go down, you've gotta really, really prove you've been discriminated against. And then it doesn't improve anything. Obviously it does improve stuff, but it doesn't stop you getting from discriminated again. Employers aren't doing the steps that they need to, to understand discrimination, and it's still rife. And just because you have that, or, that diagnosis, doesn't mean it's not gonna happen. That is all of the points that I wanted to talk about, but I do wanna really quickly mention, Dr. Devin Price has a Medium article talking about why you might not wanna get your diagnosis in way more detail than what I've talked about here. I haven't read the full thing, but it's very, very long and it's very, very good, and I highly recommend Dr. Devin Price anyway, because their book is very, very good. If you don't know what Medium is, it's just like a blog site. You do have to make an account to read it, but it's free. You don't have to like, it's not behind a paywall, the article that I'm talking about. You just need to make an account to read the full thing. But I would recommend reading that and I'm gonna leave that below. And I'm also gonna leave some other resources and accounts that I really like in for autism. Now, obviously I feel like that makes, all of the points that I've just went through, that does make it sound like I am very anti get your diagnosis. But obviously I'm not because I have my diagnosis. I did only find out about some of those points literally the week of my uh, assessment, mainly the moving abroad one because I really, I really did want to move abroad and now it might not happen. Well, it's probably not going to happen. And it was a very quick thing that I had to make a decision on as to whether I wanted to lose out on moving abroad for this diagnosis that I'd been waiting five years for. I can't say whether it's worth it or not. I can't because I wouldn't know if, I, if it would have happened anyway, but the validation that I've had since having my diagnosis I think has made it worth it for me. I, I am very proud to have my diagnosis and I am, like I said, very lucky that I had the assessment the way that I did so I don't have any trauma around my assessment, but I also think it's completely valid that if you don't want your diagnosis to still call yourself autistic. Like I said, I was calling myself autistic before I had my diagnosis to people around me. I knew I was autistic. And just because a doctor told me I was autistic didn't mean that I haven't been autistic my entire life. Like I have been autistic my entire life. It didn't start once I had that doctor tell me that that's what I was. And for all these reasons that I've just mentioned, you do not have to get your diagnosis. To still be part of this community and to still use autistic coping methods to help improve your life. I even think like you don't even have to be autistic to use autistic coping methods to improve your life. If it works for you, you can use it. Having that diagnosis and that piece of paper isn't the be all and end all. You are 100% allowed to self-diagnose and for that to be valid. And if you are somebody watching this and you don't think that's true, I just wanna highlight that the people who are self-diagnosing have been think have most likely been thinking about this for years. Like the majority of people aren't thinking for a day I'm autistic and then go around calling themselves autistic. That's not how it works. We obsess over it. We it becomes our hyperfixation. Like this is this isn't something that we just flippantly go, oh yeah, I think I'm autistic. And if there are people doing that, they're the problem, not us, <laughs> not the autistic people. So don't be saying self-diagnosis isn't valid because of the few people who are doing it without just cause. Fight those people, don't be just fighting self-diagnosis in general. Obviously this video is called Should You Get Yours? 
I'm not gonna say yes or no. That is 100% your call and up to you. Obviously, I made my decision, but I don't feel like it was an informed decision because it is just pushed down on you. I feel like it's like, oh, well, if you think you have a disorder, go get your diagnosis. But when there isn't any help afterwards, it does feel a little bit like, okay. <laughs> so you do what feels right with you. You are valid no matter what you choose. And don't listen to the awful people who say that everyone's autistic nowadays. It's bullshit. Anyway. That is all I had to say. If anybody has any points they would like to add to like for or against, please leave them below. I always like to say I want my videos to be like a little hub of information. So if anybody has any extra information, please leave it below. If you did enjoy it, please make sure to leave the video a like, comment, subscribe, share. It really helps to grow my channel and show the video to other people. But even if you don't do any of that, thank you so much for watching, but I should hopefully see you in another video.